Okay, so welcome, welcome in. I am charged with introducing our phenomenal guest speaker. And uh, I just want to say that the sister is so, so bad that we got two, two bios that I'm going to read. First, I'm going to read the one that she sent me when I asked her to do a program for uh, my company, Natural Ground One. So Regina E. Finch is a licensed clinical social worker with extensive experience in the social service field throughout the Essex Hudson region. She is the owner of Sankofala Love LLC, a counseling and consulting practice focused on assisting individuals and families create balance and emotional wellness. Her practice also aids organizations towards sustainability and effective programming. And then this one I like because it really highlights something that a lot of people are going through right now. So um, I'm gonna read her, her the second part of her bio. Educated at Rutgers University, Regina is a licensed clinical social worker with 15 years of experience. She is the owner of Sankofala Love, a North-based counseling and consulting practice focused, focused on assisting clients in creating balance and emotional wellness. That's huge. She is skilled at supporting survivors of violence and individuals coping with anxiety-related disorders, depression, and chronic health issues. In addition, she consults in the field of nonprofit management, program design, and fund development. Join us as Regina shares tips on building and improving our mental health in the new year. So I welcome, welcome in Regina and there you go. All right, thank you. You're welcome. To be here. Um, so I am gonna share this presentation. Again, I'm just super excited to be here. I know we had met previously um, over a few months ago doing another wellness presentation. And so I appreciate um, the invitation back into the room with you all and to meet uh, some of your other members. It's been great today. So I'd like to um, share this pre PowerPoint presentation. Um, let me... We should be able to see. So what we're covering today is a few ways to hack our mental health. And, but first I wanna kind of talk a little bit about what mental health is, right? Cause someone asked me that one time, a friend of mine asked me, well, what is mental health? They always say mental health and oh, this person, we were talking about how sometimes people um, commit acts and we wonder if it's due to, if their actions are due to their mental health. So this comes from the WHO, and um, the idea is that this is a state of mental well-being. Um, so just mental wellness that helps us, enables us to cope with stressors um, and realize or come to actualization, right? So we're also talking about how we contribute to our community, and all of this is very essential to our health, overall health and wellness. So just as with our physical health, each of us will encounter risk and challenges to our mental wellness, every person, right? So of course, some of these, like the effects of trauma, grief, or chemical disorders are difficult to avoid completely if that is your, your lot in life. However, there are things that we can do. I'm downtown, y'all. There are things that we can do to equip ourselves um, and manage our stressors. So we're gonna cover eight simple strategies to protect our mental health. The first one everyone is supposed to do on a very, 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 very regular basis, but some of us do not do this very well, and it is to sleep. So sleep is the ultimate reset, having good rapid eye movement sleep, so that's deep sleep right, um, really supports our brain performance. And even taking those power naps that some of us did when we were younger, 
even into our maturity can really kind of help us out when the day is dragging on or we're not feeling as well um, emotionally or physically powering up, you know, um, for instance. So number two, um, I always, I've, I've always thought of, but I've learned so much more about through knowing Sister Dina. And this is about using our sense of smell and really kind of um, capitalizing on some of those things and how smell really kind of connects to our wellness, our memories. And so these are just two, a couple things. Lavender can help us to wind down in the evening or at other times. And since like lemon or peppermint may perk us up when we're feeling down, feeling low. The third one is one of my favorite things and has always been an escape from me. And this is journaling. So actually writing pen to paper about our fears and worries can help us to process how we are feeling. Um, it also can be healing and can stave off anxieties. So, you know, journaling can help us discover unproductive thinking patterns, which we all sometimes have adopted over time and help us to reality check any irrational fears and unrealistic expectations. So, but here's the thing, not everybody's willing to commit to making a long daily diary, right? It feels like, okay, I'm in an episode of Babysitter's Club and I'm going, dear diary. <laughs> but um, even something like a bullet journal, which is where we're just kind of writing um, key points, right? Or using um, journal prompts, uh, also maybe just setting a timer to say, okay, I'm going to write today or every day or every other day or the third Friday of every month for 20 minutes, um, just to kind of create space and time to brain dump. Sometimes we call it a brain dump where you just dump out what's in your mind. It could just be the racing thoughts. Sometimes we our minds are cluttered and so we can just write them all down. These are all my worries. And if you have it, to then um, to think about, well, what are my responses to these worries? So these are all the thoughts, and here's maybe a response to those things. And we can find journal prompts online. We can find, I'm happy to, to share any that, you know, that I have and have encountered, or just even if you're into writing, joining a group for those things can be helpful. So um, our fourth um, hack or coping technique is movement. So um, we don't always like to say exercise, but in general, it's a good idea to think about and consider what type of movement makes you feel good in your body. Um, there are all different types of movements. So it could be a restorative yoga. These are some examples, kickboxing, um, daily stretching, or walking indoor or outdoors. So indoor walking is a thing. Um, and it could be in your as simple as in your home, just walk, just moving or dancing. Um, my step parents actually, and they took me with them one day for a mall walk. <laughs> Which honestly, like I, yeah, that's really, you know, can be beneficial. And it's indoors, it's, you know, it's heated in the winter, air conditioned in the summer. And, you know, so that could be a thing. And it's not just something that our seniors do, it's something that they sort of created, but we can all do it. Um, so the, the fifth one is music. So, I mean, many of us have various experiences with music, but listening to our favorite music can boost dopamine chemicals that are naturally produced by the brain. So that's the enjoyment, right? Um, and so we can consider creating a, um, a playlist of upbeat music to start out the day or to turn on at any other point. The other option is or another suggestion is to realize that instrumental music, those of us who, um, so I'm someone who sometimes gets a little distracted, being honest. And so I learned in college that instrumental music can sort of absorb some of that level of distraction to help us stay a little bit more focused and a little bit more productive in times when we need to be. Okay, 
So um, number six is about reframing. And reframing is something that we can do cognitively. So within our mind and within our thinking, uh, it involves changing the way you think or respond to a stressor, right? So rather than just, which we get used to just reacting, right? So um, my baby niece is maybe, I have a, a niece who's three years old. Um, and so maybe Willow is spinning around and knocking everything down and I'm like, just stop. Right. But if we can take a beat, a pause to sort of reframe and not, you know, outburst, then that can be helpful. So we're recognizing and then challenging a negative thought and then considering how I can view it in a more positive or constructive way. Oh, my goodness. You just think that you are a dancing queen. Let's put on the music and actually make time to dance right with that baby but here's some other examples so instead of thinking I'm just a mess reframe it as I'm just a human um, I can't do this towards and reframing it to say I can do hard things instead of saying I'm a failure try remembering that I'm just learning and when we're asking why is this happening or why is this happening to me what is this teaching me or what can I learn so really kind of thinking, how can I transition this negative thought or about this negative situation into um, something more constructive? Number seven is something called radical rest. And there's actually a, a novel about this. And this is something that, um, you know, you hear the language, but really the, the crux of radical rest comes out of um, has been talked about a lot lately. It comes out of just understanding that we as people of color um, have really experienced a lot, each of us individually, but also as a culture, um, that we sort of carry the weight and the, the trauma of our history with us all the time. Um, and so, you know, I... I was a student of African-American studies and African-American history and culture. And so that's where I connected with the idea of Sankofa, which is to take the lessons from the past with us into the future. Um, but one of these things is where we sort of are being um, audacious and radical is to actually take our rest because it is the thing that we that restores us the most. Um, and so in that regard, being serious about mental wellness means taking courageous steps to put ourselves first. Um, I was talking with someone earlier today who was talking about how so much of what we do and are sort of required to do in society doesn't matter a whole lot in the grand scheme, right? So um, she was talking about sitting at the table and your, your kitchen table looks like the post office with all of the bills and letters that you have to respond to. And it's like, oh, but this one is overdue or this one is due tomorrow. It's like, okay, if it's late today, it'll be late tomorrow. So just take a break, have a cup of tea, <laughs> you know, or something. But really taking our, putting ourselves first each individually, and then the family and friends come after that. So one example of doing that in a, a minor way, it depends on who you are if you think this is minor, but maximizing our paid time off. Those of us who work within an organization or a corporation, really just being purposeful about taking your time and leaving nothing on the table at the end of the, the fiscal year. They gave it to you, you take it, right? So repurposing sick days as wellness days, using vacation time, even if you ain't got the money to go to Barbados like you want to. Um, my, my little cousin right now, she's 21 and she's in South Africa on a study trip. And we're, I'm so excited that she's there and I wish I was there too, but it's on my list, right? But even if you just took a wellness day to explore and plan that dream vacation that you're not able to go on right now, but you will be able to go on later to really kind of maximize taking your time and using time. Use vacation time to explore your local area or um, just don't let the time that you've been given go to waste the time off. 
And the last one is uh, seek support. So one way to bolster our, our mental and emotional wellness this year is to seek support. It's really, really difficult to go it alone. And some of us get really used to, I'm doing this on my own, I have to do this or I have to do that. But it's meaningful to reach out and it can be helpful to reach out. So that could be could mean investing in therapy, but it could also just mean joining a support group, volunteering, which I know you all really do understand, um, networking within your community, getting involved in social activities. So these are some examples. So meetup.com, you can put in your favorite thing to do. Um, I say each of us has our nerdiness. So there's something that you like that maybe not everybody you know likes, but there are other people in the world and in your neighborhood that might like those things. So it could be museum hopping. I'm really into animals. So it could be that. It could be crafting. It could be anything. Um, but you can put those now because we have the internet as sophisticated as we do. We can put those things in the search term search terms of a website like meetup.com or Eventbrite and just see what's happening in the Tri-County area along the lines of things that you like and some things may be free or low cost and you could just go and participate. And it's a way to kind of meet people that you didn't know, um, introduce yourself to something new, maybe even seek a new environment. So now I wanna know if you all have any other ideas or you can share some of the things that you do to bolster, bolster your wellness throughout the, the weeks and months? Does anyone have any suggestions? I do. I, I started um, a date, like I take myself out on dates. Mm -hmm. And one of the, one of my favorite places to visit is the museum in Newark and um, the Harriet Tubman Monument. Yes. I just, I just like going down there. Right. Yep. And like things that have taken on kind of a new face over the last year or so, mm -hmm. um, the the monument and the museum too has gone through a lot of changes. So it's good to kind of rediscover yeah. places that you knew before. Yep. So next month it'll be somewhere else now. Yes. I'll okay. take myself on a date. I haven't decided yet. Right. So you're even giving yourself something to look forward to. That would also another tip, right? Giving ourselves little things to look forward to. Um, another thing that we can do is kind of build it carrots along the journey. Um, so, you know, if there's some chore or thing that we don't really enjoy doing, but I have to do it, build in a slight, a little reward for yourself at the end. Yeah. That's you know, so after I go to the gym, I go get a smoothie or I make myself a smoothie or after i visit some someone who I had to visit, I reward myself by going past my favorite park or mm -hmm. something like that. Does anyone else have any things that they would share that they've done to bolster their mental wellness? Well, I try to turn every <laughs> work opportunity into an excursion. <laughs> you know like um not work opportunity but if I know I have to do something like out of town or out of the state or something like that I try to like make it a weekend or something you know mm -hmm. because it's like well I know I have these obligations so I might as well make it a trip you know yeah um, so yeah, I try to do those so like if you had to go to Philadelphia for a meeting or to South Jersey for a meeting, maybe you'd hop over to find out what else is going on in that so, area. Yeah. So, so example, last weekend I had to go to Maryland for church. I had to go to, for a church conference. Mm -hmm. It was at, it started at 10 a.m. And I had to drive. <laughs> it was, and I came back the same day. So it was three hours there, three hours back. I, um, my thought was I'm going down Friday night. We're going to go to karaoke and then we're going to the conference in the morning, <laughs> you know, that didn't work out, but <laughs> you know, I'm trying to do that more because like the exhaustion is getting real, you know, mm -hmm. um, I done turned 40 something, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I'm over 40 now and you know, I ain't 22 no more. So 
you know, I'm just trying to enjoy the things that I know I have to do. Not that I don't enjoy my church conference, but, you know, that whole driving there and driving back on the same day, it's just becoming a bit much. And so, you know, try to try to come up with ways to make it less tiring. Yep. Absolutely. So, and it's, that's what we, that's what I mean by radical or what we mean by radical is to really recognize that, yeah, maybe five years ago, I would take the three hour down, three hour back in one day and however long the conference is, but I don't feel like it. Or I'm going to build- getting there. I'm getting there because I could have a break for self to yeah. say, okay, but I'm going to stop by this, you know, whatever it is, place that I can rest for a while to even just sit at the harbor for a little bit because mm -hmm. I feel like road, it's, it's, it's stressful. Yep. Thank you for that, Renata. That's awesome. Yep. Thank you. Anyone else have a, a something they could share about what they do or what they've done in the past? Yes, greetings. Um, so because I I try to take the holistic approach to healing, um, the mind body soul connection. So I, you know, it's really not uh, not able to just separate just the mental health from the body. I try not to. Um, so I really like that you began with sleep because people don't really realize how important that is because that's what I call taking out the garbage. Mm -hmm. Your body does more work when you're asleep than when you're woke. And people don't really realize that. And that's why when you have a lot of broken sleep and sometimes you'll wake up like you never slept, you know, and then you're, that, that hinders your, uh, your nervous system, that hinders you know, your ability to be able to not be cranky. And then you're just lethargic. And then you go day after day after day with that habit. Then it, it creates a, per a different personality or a different person. So that mind, body, soul connection and sleep. Another thing is water, the importance of water, you know, and the importance of a certain kind of water. All water is not the same. So um, I would suggest a reverse osmosis water um, or either your alkaline water. And so it depends on what you need. Some people need um, when you call it the, uh, the distilled water. When you're trying to remove toxicity out of your body, you need distilled water. Uh, so and then that, that helps your brain. That helps your brain to get oxygen through the water. So if your water is depleted or you're low on water, you know, you, you can't think properly. Another thing is having your minerals, your vitamins and mineral balance in your body that will affect your mental health. You know, so I try to do an assessment. First thing I do to see where they are chemically because we're, we're, we're a chemical being. So if your chemicals in your body, if your pH is off, then you're going to be off, going to be off mentally, physically, and spiritually. Uh, one other thing that I would suggest is, because we're, we're gardeners, we love the garden, and I'm really trying to push grounding, you know, for us as even as gardeners to make sure that we put our feet on the earth, you know, that we connect back to that magnetic force that we need, even if you get a small space in your yard or wherever you are, that's your grounding space. And you kind of meditate there and you walk there so you can get some balance. So, you know, just a couple of things. So, uh, so that, uh, back to that oxygen and your, your, your mind and your cells. So, you know, we know that our red blood cells, they, uh, they replicate every 120 days. So if you're not reproducing new blood cells, or if you're uh, reproducing hampered or damaged blood cells, this is where all disease and disease and inflammation begins, and red blood cells and white blood cells. So you have to make sure you're putting proper nutrients in your body, your eating habits, you know, your sleeping habits, you know, you know, just the things that you're being affected by in your environment, noise, you know, just drama, dramatic people. <laughs> 
you know, so you have to just kind of take charge of your whole environment. And um, I know you all probably uh, heard the other day, well, I think it was Tuesday. Tuesday was T-R-H-T Day and um, put out by the Kellogg Foundation. It may be a little bit off, but I, that day was called Truth, Racial Healing and Transformation. And you can look at about by the Kellogg Foundation. So we have to learn to tell the truth. If you if you don't tell the truth, that affects your mental makeup. Or if you deal with people that are not truth tellers, uh, and we we know that we've been subjected to a lot of the racial hatredness. So we have to our racial healing, you know, and we have to find ways that we can bring that in and be positive with each other. And even if we have a little a little itch with each other. We have to find a way to fix it very quickly, very quickly, and that will transform all of us. So thank you so much. I appreciate it, the things that you've given us today. Thank you. Thank you. And I appreciate what you shared back with us. I mean, the list could have been <laughs> so much longer because one of the things that, um, you know, what you're saying, um, Dr. Abdus Salam, is also about kind of creating boundaries, right? And, and mm -hmm. Forcing boundaries with others and with ourselves, right? So what is it that I'm willing to sort of tolerate from other people? And what is it that I'm going to insist upon um, and really just be intentional about those things? Because that kind of stuff can stress us and just yes. and we're, we're left kind of stewing on, you know, something someone said when we could have said I, no and I don't want to hear that or I'm not going to tolerate that from you or not going to tolerate that in my space um but yes and the points you're making about minerals and about hydration are key definitely thank you for that. anyone else have any kind of thing that they thought of as we were sharing so far a good conversation I have a comment. I am so filled from the both of you two doctors. I'm going to call you both doctors uh, because you've opened the door up to, I'll say for me personally, other folks that are doing work in this area, dealing with the racism and the trauma. And um, I want to say worry with love about our community. Um, and a lot of key things, um, Regina, that you said about um, not trying to take on everything. So for me, both of you sisters have opened the door on what I need, how to learn how to um, put myself first. Um, but my worry is always about other people um, and thinking that I can um, fix everything, which then becomes a, a battle within myself that be can become toxic. Um, so I'm learning that I need both of of your suggestions and expertise um, to do the work that I'm doing outside of home and inside of homes because it's all connected for me. Um, and then the part about the sleep, I don't know if other people do this or not, but when I sleep, I have time traveled where I can get up and see where I was at and what the incidents were. Um, I thought it was a fluke, but it's something that has happened through childhood. So um, it's like I'm really doing something and at that place. Not that I'm really exhausted, but it's, I don't know if that's a deep sleep or what, what you call it, but <laughs> um, it happens periodically. So I have to learn to harness it and probably get more understanding. And if my water and food and all that intake could probably clear up what's going on with me, that way too. So I'm really absorbing what you're giving for my own self internally. Yeah. So thank you both. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Ms. Kirkland. And um, you know, I don't I'm a mental health practitioner, but I'm I'm a black woman first. And so I definitely believe that, you know, we do have, you know, sort of some supernatural, you know, there can be those things are real. Um, Thank you. <laughs> absolutely. I very, you know, I definitely validate those those things that people that that some of us experience. Um, but I would be curious about kind of when 
that happens if you're ever able to um, tap into or recognize what's going on around you or in your life when you're time traveling, because I wonder if there's a, a trigger for that to um, to go on for you. But that's for you to figure out, you know. It's almost like, like a premonition on things mm -hmm. and connects. Um, one particular time when it happened, someone found the, tri the lost caves of, I forget the time, but they were telling me that of something to do with the Yoruba and the place that I was at was a cave, spiritual cave was a slab with a real dark black man on it. Um, and it was broken down to me um, from a sister from Ethiopia that that wasn't really a dream. It was time traveling and I went back to other different things. Um, I haven't got all of it, but but it happens. It's almost like um, getting me prepared for something or someplace that I've been that's about to be revisited. Um, so, and sleepwalking since a child and not knowing that I was doing that. So um, I need to get back in to see what it really is, but I can tell you that, you know, I can tell you what the places look like, who was there. I don't see myself. And they said to me, well, you don't see yourself because you were there. If you saw yourself, then you weren't. Mm -hmm. So got to get deep, a little deeper to find out. But that happened maybe about, I want to say, 10 years ago, that particular one. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. And I want to say about Carla, she gave me a journal to do this writing that I haven't done yet. Everything that you said, um, I did a little bit. So I know that that does. You muted yourself. Oh, I was saying, I know that that works too, the, the journaling. Um, for myself, I can always see what other people need, but I don't bring it for my own self. So that is something that um, I need to, to, you know, put myself first. Yeah. Another alternative to journaling, um, and, you know, I don't know if this, you know, depends on the person, but it's also okay to just do um, voice notes to yourself. Um, or okay. even like a video log for yourself. I have a client who um, actually started a YouTube show based mm -hmm. on her mental health, and she kind of does that periodically. Um, but that's a choice. It doesn't have to be public. It doesn't have to be open. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if it's easier to just turn on your, your video camera for a second, and it, you can keep it or discard it, but just to do the brain dump, verbally rather than writing it down sometimes can help okay thank you um if i can you know maybe sometimes we have to look at um you know we have a 24-hour day and our body has a clock also you know uh, we're on a on mm -hmm. a, a cyclical nature of events in the universe we're part of that universe and so the organ the organ, I call it the organ body clock. You know, so our organs have a certain time that each one of them are at their highest peak and then when they're at their lowest peak. But just like the clock moves, our body moves in that same type of fashion. And during our sleep, um, it's going through that situation. So would you describe your, your it's, going, it's connecting to some of your organs. And so that'd be interesting to 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 know what time this happened, because your body's trying to tell you something, and so um, it's it, it's a good thing, because if our body didn't tell us things, mm -hmm. and we would know, you know, when we needed anything. But um, yeah, that that's something that you can look into just based on your organ body clock. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, just to tap into what uh, Donna mentioned in terms of the journaling, in about 2003, I guess about 20 years ago, I came across a book called The Artist's Way. It was written by someone who was an artist who had hit a block. And so she describes some of the things that helped her um, kind of recapture her creativity. And one of them was that she uh, would get up uh, in the morning and close to the first thing she did was just to write down what, whatever was in her mind and on her mind. 
So it wasn't um, journaling in the sense that it was a, a, a planned or de deliberate kind of thing. It was more stream of consciousness, just whatever was there at the time, she just put it down. And so, um, and the the recommendation is to, to do that for like three pages. So you don't necessarily have to go on and on. So I, had, I st started doing that and still do it actually most mornings. And um, the nice thing is that it, it helps clear the jumble <laughs> sometimes. And so you don't, so I don't end up carrying that with me throughout the day because I've kind of gotten it out. And that's one of the purposes to kind of get stuff out that you might end up carrying that you don't even recognize that you're carrying throughout the day. And sometimes in the getting out, there is also a sorting through that goes on while you're doing the writing. And I had not been doing that regularly um, for a while, I guess most of last year and got back to it this, the beginning of this year. And I can tell the difference because it, it helps me then have a different um, mindset and um, perspective uh, through the day, because again, I'm not carrying around all this other stuff. And then another thing she mentions is so, so that's a way to kind of get stuff out and then to take things in and kind of kind of nourish yourself or build yourself up. She describes this as artist's dates, which is doing something that, you know, gives you joy or pleasure and, you know, making sure to do that at, at least once a month. And so what Hajadina was saying about your dates reminded me of that. So there were elements of both of those in um, the, le the list that you presented, Regina, and then some of the, the follow-up comments. Um, so um, the, that I don't do the, the, the dates as uh, faithfully as I should, um, but that's something that I can see would be um, beneficial as well. Thank you so much. Okay. This was great. Thank you all so much for your time and for your input. I loved hearing your suggestions and your thoughts. Well, thank you for all that you shared. I think this was really helpful. I think you packed a lot in there. Each of those points we, you know, we could have discussed for uh, a little presentation. Time. On so, definitely. Yeah. So that was there's really filled with a lot of um, helpful information, food for thought. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Needed it. <laughs> Same, thank you. I, don't, yes. I posted, I posted um, a, a few thank of your you. nuggets for posterity so that I could go back to it. Great. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And the sleep was a big one. I have to really work on that one. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's a good one.